Hello and welcome. I gotta do a little food porn. There's a lot of food porn going on at YouTube right now. Look at that. I find that eating a whole lot of food uh, dulls the pain of fairly weak hole not liking me. Tons better. All right. Mm. Craft beer review. Let's crack it up. Let's crack this craft beer open. This uh, board head barley wine, 2011 reserve. Come here, puppies. like me, don't you? Don't you like me, puppy? Yes, you do. <laughs> A come fairly weak who doesn't like me. Is it... I can slim down. <laughs> All right. Crack this open. Get to review it. Oh, so hard to open a beer. Ah, look at that smoke, that foam, that wonderful head. Yeah, that smells awesome. Let's just sample it, shall we? OMG! But that rules. Well, uh, oh, and actually, I kind of want to—I want to dedicate this craft uh, beer uh, book review uh, to Hammered Shit Steak. Hammered Shit Steak. What up, Hammered? Um, I got tears in my eyes. Oh, only life could be perfect. <clears throat> Hammered Shit Steak. Uh, you like the—you like the Dungeons and Dragons. I like the Dungeons and Dragons. Role playing rules. It's kind of why I like reading so much. Kind of like role playing, and losing myself in a tale. Uh, so, I kind of think I might have reviewed this before. That's okay. Just keep putting it out there. The Deeds of Paxanarian. <clears throat> Alright, so one thing I like about this book is that the main character doesn't say much. The main character actually, uh, what they're doing is experiencing. Um, it starts with the uh, main character as a young lady um, that wants to break free of uh, uh, society's bonds on her. But uh, she can't do it completely. She, she looks for an acceptable way. And so what she does is signs up for a mercenary, as a mercenary. And then uh, all the men, women, just need to be a certain age and physically capable. And they take you. So that's a way to pluck yourself out of a society. Um, and a society was like so compacted and so small that a lot of times when people are talking about um, where did you grow up, you'd say, I grew up in a town called Apple. And they're like, well, and where, where is Apple? And they said, it's in the land of, so pretty much it's just, you know, it's a giant area. Um, and then you'd, you'd name the, the capital and say how many days ride you were you know, I'm, I'm, I was 12 days ride from the capital to the west. That was the directions. Um, so, like, her community, like, everybody was in a certain kind of role. and um, So she wanted to escape it. But she also had, like, realistic, kind of like realistic dreams of what escaping is like. Like, um, it won't be better than what she's trying to run from, but at least, you know... Uh, she's making her own choices and uh, at least I mean I think that's that's what was her that was her stated intention uh, oh yum 
It fills my heart full of love. Full of love. Even though there's a big gaping hole. Because of fairly weak hoe. So where does all this, her own intention, and then like, she's still cast upon society's current. Um, she has a million and one bosses. Uh, she bumps into all these different kinds of organizations and societies that have all different expectations uh, and preconceived notions. Um, and uh, in the end, I think what defined her was the fact that she had experienced such a wide uh, spectrum of life and that all the, t all the times that she felt she was, I don't know, like shackled or um, abused or forced uh, uh, or guided either uh, through, through uh, guided through love or guided through hate uh, by others, um, as she experienced this wide variety of things, um, she got to see it from everything, from so many perspectives that, uh, I don't know, you kind of tell, like, in the book there's this tipping point where she just has understanding. Like, not much has changed, except for she has, like, a really amazing understanding of what's going on around her. And, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people that could pick up on that, uh, started responding to her completely differently. Like she was still the same person. It was just uh, the amount of understanding she had, um, in about reality, about real life, um, the fairness and the unfairness. Um, yeah, like some sort of like it was more than self awareness. It was, it was close to like total awareness, um, which didn't give her any kind of extra power. I just. Um, gave her some clear vision. So, the deed of Paxanarian. Is that my saying that right? Paxanarian. Yeah. So sometimes names in books, I just kind of glance at them and like, like my, when I, was, I remember when I read uh, The Hobbit, you know, there was all these weird names. I just totally like gave them whatever like maybe the first couple letters were. That, in my mind, that was their name. Uh, should probably, should probably take a hit off this again. Oh, barley wine. There's actually a, a, a beer store in uh, Portland um, that sells a wide, wide spectrum of bottled beers. And I might go there and start uh, sampling the barley wine. It's kind of like a fancy malt liquor, you know, a proper malt liquor. Oh, God, that reminds me. <clears throat> it doesn't remind me about uh, Fairly Weeko's uh, lack of love for me. Yes, it does. Oh, okay. I went into a convenience store. I had a bunch of malt liquor under my arm, and I'm like, doo -doo 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 -doo, just slapped it down on the counter. The guy's like, ma'am, you, you, uh, you haul that malt liquor like a pro. And I'm like, yeah, you might say that. Some guy said, yeah, someone just tried to carry that much malt liquor over to the counter, and they dropped one. And I'm like, that ain't no good. And we started talking about malt liquor. And uh, these guys, they knew what they were talking about, but they didn't come from the malt liquor community. They weren't a part of the big society. They weren't a king of malt liquor. So as they were talking about things, they were saying that uh, um, you don't buy the malt liquor for taste, you buy it for effect. And I said, yes, and some say that, you know, a 10-minute boundary, a 10-minute time limit is adequate. You should have it down in 10. And they're kind of like, oh, okay, all right. And then someone said, yeah, and you might as well, actually, because the last, the last bit of a malt liquor, uh, you're, not, you're not getting any taste, like it tastes bad. And I'm like, yes, some call that the swill and say it should be done in one go. And they kind of like, 
you know, I mean, they could tell that I was I was talking from like a, a, a place of like repeated knowledge, cultural knowledge, uh, our culture of the drinking community. Um, and so one of the guys, he like he was actually working, and he moved closer and closer and closer. And as I started sharing more malt liquor uh, um, ideology, the, the cult of malt liquor, um, he said to me, "You know, I just went to a party, and uh, we had," and he named all the malt liquors you could get in the Northwest. Um, and what they did was they put them all in ice in coolers, and uh, everyone had wine glasses. And so uh, you, uh, you, you grab your Mickeys, you pour, you fill up your wine glass, and you put it back in the ice, and someone else pulls it up and fills up their wine glass. And they had a wine glass malt liquor party. And I thought, I'm talking to another malt liquor king. I gave him props. Mad dog props. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let's, let's wrap this up. Uh, another shout out uh, to H. Strong. H. Strong, I suspect the horse, uh, horse or horses uh, that you masturbate is actually one horse. And I don't know, I can't, I probably can't stop you. I probably can't. But if I could just encourage you to do one thing when you jump into the field all like ready to operate if that horse runs away just call it a day all right just let that horse go um you know come back in half a day you know or, or for the love of god give that horse a day off Alright, one more book review. I'm going to do a short, this is short because I've only just started the book. I'm uh, 176 pages into it. I'm 116. I was bragging because I just want to be loved. <laughs> uh, this is called Quiet. It's by Susan, Susan Cain. This book's brilliant. It has information in it on studies on the human mind and on personalities. Uh, it, like, makes, it's, it talks about an interesting topic to me, about introversion and extroversion. <clears throat> but the best thing about it, it's kind of like why I like the New Yorker, the newspaper, um, not the magazine, <laughs> um, is it, it's continually making references to studies and people and taking a small amount of their information and she places it in her book which makes me just want to like explore. I want every every reference she makes. I want to look this person up or look that book up uh, and get it on Kindle. Actually, I thought I was buying that on Kindle, and then it showed up at my door like two days later. Like I accidentally purchased a product off the internet. That's weird. All right, so that's done. We've done my. Uh, <clears throat> Craft Beer uh, Book Review, The Deeds of Paxanarian and Quiet by Susan Cain. Oh, uh, Elizabeth Moon, that's a fake name. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moon uh, wrote The Deeds of Paxanarian. And Full Sail, of course, yeah, Full Sail made my barley wine. Barley wine. Uh, and uh, My Broken Heart uh, brought to you by Fairly Weeko. Fairly weak, oh, not liking the arrow since uh, a while ago. Huh. You eat away the pain. Barley wine.